Hey guys, Bill here with uh, KeystoneWeapon.com. Something I've been seeing that's commonly coming up is uh, people talking about rubbing points or um, feed jams, all kinds of stuff like that <clears throat> on Facebook and on some of the forums I belong to and stuff like that. And as a you know, as a gunsmith, like one of the things that I use a lot is uh, something called Dicam. It's a uh, Dicam Steel Blue. You can get it in a spray paint can. You can get it in one of these little guys. Um, this is something I use to diagnose rubbing points and jam points and things like that to see where where a round is rubbing or uh, something like that. A lot of guys have recommended using nail polish, and I've actually done that quite a few times with nail polish. Uh, so if you're ever down in my uh, gunsmithing bench and you're like, why does Bill have red nail polish? Well, that's why. Actually, I've used this to touch sights up before, but... Um, it's pretty common that I steal stuff from my wife upstairs, like in a pinch when I need something to work. Another thing you can use is a sharpie. So, like, like for instance, like say you wanna you wanna diagnose um, like a rubbing point. You know, you can you can use a sharpie. You know, put it on there. I like to use blue. You can use any color you want. Um, you know, maybe stick the magazine up in there, eject it, stick it in, eject it. If you want to kind of get an idea where like a rubbing point is and, you, and you'd be able to you'd be able to see that like with a sharpie or same thing on like a barrel hood or something like that a nice thing about a sharpie is if there's a little bit of oil on something it'll wipe right off the bad thing about a sharpie is if there's quite a bit of oil on something or it's a lubed part it's not going to stay on there very long so it's going to be tough to diagnose um so i use a lot of times this die chem steel blue this stuff's pretty awesome it's uh, it smells bad. It has like uh, some kind of drying agent in it, but you can, you can put this all over the place. It takes a few seconds to let it dry. I've uh, I've put this all over my frames and slides and barrels to fit barrel bushings, and I use it to uh, to fit a lot of times to uh, to fit slide stops. I use it a lot of times to fit um, mag releases. Like this one has an extended mag release, and of course it's a drop in part but nothing's ever truly drop in if you want it to work really well so you can you can you know adjust things adjust safeties and stuff like that to see where they're where they're hitting uh, make sure that your sear has a perfect edge on it or if you need to say you'd need to polish or sand something down you can find if there's any pits in it or anything like that with a little bit of die chem um, it's a really great uh, thing if you the places to get it I mean you can actually buy it on like Amazon but any like usually like any welding machining place wherever you'd go to get like like end mill bits or anything like that but now this is like totally dry so it's not gonna it's not gonna come off um, the cool thing is if you were to scribe it like say down here it would actually leave a mark so it would scribe it and uh, I'll do the same thing with this I'm just gonna put it in release it you know, just to allow it to drag on the, uh, on the, uh, oh God, I lost my train of thought. Allow it to drag just a little bit on there. And you'll see that this isn't quite as resistant. Like it, it takes a, a little bit more time, but you'll start to see your, your wear marks and stuff like that. So if it's on a slide and you rack the slide a whole bunch of times or whatever, or, or this is something I've actually painted up guns that are really close to being done, but they're not quite done. And I've gone out and shot them a whole bunch of times to see where any of my high spots are or something like that. The thing about this is, is you can't just take Windex and take it off. You need to use like acetone. So that's where I usually steal my wife's uh, nail polish remover. And it'll literally just wipe off like, just, just dissolves it like it's not even there. So it's pretty cool. Um, so even though there's like, this mag is a little bit oily, it goes right on it. And it's, it's nice for diagnosing problems. The other thing I do, and... Um, this is not something I, I normally do too often. I'm sure I have one laying around here somewhere. Yeah, here. Um, here's a 9mm round. It's completely painted except for like the back. But sometimes I'll use this to diagnose extraction issues and things like that. I'm going to try not to scratch it up in the mag. It, it's, it's inevitable that it's going to happen. But if I were to, uh, to rack this in and eject it, I can learn a little bit um about this i mean i can use a, lo a loaded round a non-loaded round but i'll be able to see where the extractor's grabbing it on the rim i can usually see um 
now this one's painted up pretty good. I should have painted it a lot lighter, but I can usually see like where it hits the barrel hood and, and such. And if I had painted the back of this, and this is a dead round, it's, it's a dead primer. I've used this trick a lot to tune my ejectors. My ejectors in a lot of my guns are tuned a little bit different because I'm a lefty. I try to get them to not throw the uh, rounds in my face since I'm right eye dominant. Um, and uh, one of the ways I go about doing that is by tuning my tuning my ejector in just a little bit. It would help if I took the mag out, wouldn't it? Um, so you'll see that like my ejector angles are just a little bit different than probably what your ejector angles are. Mine are actually cut back. They're actually tilted in, and it, I know it looks like just like a like a ground piece of metal, but there is definitely a science to this. Um, as far as getting that to the exact angle that I want so that it'll eject the brass in the, the exact place I want. Um, so layout fluid's really useful. It's only a couple of bucks. It's something I, I would recommend having if you have some kind of weird issues. It's also great around the house. You know, you can use it on a whole bunch of different projects. I have it in a spray form. Like if I'm gonna spray out something on metal and then I can just scribe what I want and uh, it, it's, just nice to, it's just nice to work with. Um, Plus, like I said, when you're sanding, it'll help you find low spots and high spots and such. So it's a pretty cool thing. The other thing, and this just came up on some forum that I was on, and I'm going to post some of this stuff on Facebook. Um, one of the Facebook forums that I belong to, the Rock Island Armory 1911s forum, which I highly recommend you join if you have a Rock Island Armory because there's a lot of great information on there. There's some company representation. There's a big wealth of people that really know what they're doing. Um as well as a lot of people that really don't know what they're doing. So, you know, take everything with a grain of salt and uh, and do your research. That's just my common disclaimer because I've seen wrong information and I've seen great information from like that you would normally have to pay for. So that's, that's good stuff. Um, one of the things that uh, was mentioned on there was something like limp wristing and stuff like that. Like as far as like not not providing enough, you know, full support with your grip. Uh, or improper grip techniques or whatever. Maybe people are limp and maybe they're not, but the easiest way to uh, avoid that is to have somebody else shoot it and see what, see what happens. But um, the one thing that I use as a shooting technique, and I've been using this lately, is like with the iPhone 5 or a lot of the, a lot of the newer phones have the slow-mo capability, and it's awesome. Like I was, I'm working with my sister on doing uh, like faster shooting transitions and stuff like that with steel plates, and uh, when she misses, we'll go back to those misses on the, on the tape and I'll be filming like at this angle, like right at the, right at the gun. Um, and a lot of times we'll, we'll use this one since it's, it's together. Uh, a lot of times what I'll see is, you know, maybe she'll anticipate recoil a little bit and dip the gun, you know, um, you know, by anticipating recoil, you're, you know, that, that would be a character characteristic of like, uh, pushing the gun down or, or or something like that and we would go back and look at that she would see it and go okay I see what I'm doing and uh, be able to correct it it's also helpful if you have ejection problems or, or something like that you can see what the gun's telling you by watching it in slow motion and seeing what's happening you can see exactly where in the stroke the ejection issue is happening or double feeding or whatever the case may be but those are just some random faqs i thought i'd throw those up and uh you guys have a good one see you on the forums and uh keep it classy